Amen, folks. If you have your Bibles, turn to Matthew chapter 24 with me this morning, please. If you'd like to stand as we open the pages of the infallible book. Matthew chapter number 24. And verse number 34. Matthew chapter 24 and verse number 34. The divine text says, Verily I say unto you, This generation shall not pass till all these things be fulfilled. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. But of that day and hour knoweth no man. No, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. Father, bless your word now. Bless your word to those who believe it and those that would receive it. In Jesus' name, amen. You can be seated. The Lord Jesus Christ has made it very clear in the book of Matthew, also Mark chapter 13 and verse number 32. He essentially says the same thing, that no man knoweth the hour, no man knows the day, no man knows the time of the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Theologically or scripturally, we'll deal with that in just a few minutes to give you some of the reasons why that no man can know. But first of all, this morning, I'd like to begin to talk about the man who has been in the spotlight now for some time, has undoubtedly spent a lot of money around the world to, uh, to, to declare that yesterday, note carefully, yesterday, May the 21st, 2011, would be the end of the world, or however you may want to say it. Some say the rapture of the church, what have you. Although it's hard for me to nail him down theologically exactly what he's talking about, whether he's premillennial, postmillennial, pre-trib, rapture, mid-trib, rapture, even whether he believes in a rapture or whatever. But the bottom line is that in the eyes of the world, yesterday did not come to an end. An awful lot of people spent an awful lot of money. Some of the people that were his followers spent every dime they had. They cashed in their retirement. They spent money to, to, uh, to put up billboards and placards through the subway system in New York to advertise. They walked the streets. They went door to door. They spent a lot of money in advertising in various modes to tell people that the Lord Jesus Christ was coming back and that the end of the world was going to happen May the 21st, 2011. Well, this is May the 22nd, 2011. And I'm not joking, and I'm not mocking, and I'm not exulting, and I'm not happy, and I'm not up here today to make fun of anybody. I want to bring you a message this morning that is very important. I think it is very important for us to understand that our faith has been plagued for generations Amen. by people like this who feel like that they have a special revelation from God where they can rise up in clear defiance of the scripture that tells you plainly that no man can know the hour or the day and declare that Christ is coming back at a certain time. Well, he goes down the chute with all the rest of them. He has failed miserably and completely as he would, as I could say to you, he will and whoever is in, whoever's thinking about setting another date, I warn you too that you will go down the same path he went down. You will miss it for no man knows that day or that hour. If the Lord just happened to come back on the day that you picked, it had nothing to do with you. You just happened to be lucky and hit the day with pure guesswork. For there is no way that anybody can know the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ and what day that will be. But the question this morning is this. Where is Harold Camping? Huh. He can't be found. I don't blame him. But the bottom line is he needs to be found. Why? He must answer to the people that he has deceived, the people that he has hurt, the people that are sorrowing today. There are people today that are so disillusioned. Their faith has literally been crashed upon the rocks. There are people this morning that are despondent in despair. 
and some of them may even be suicidal. He had a lot of people following him and they genuinely, sincerely believed what he said. And I truly believe that a lot of these people that followed him were true believers in the Lord Jesus Christ. They were real brothers and sisters. But they failed. He failed. He missed it. And he missed it because no man can know the day or the hour. I got on the internet, did a little searching around, and I found out what the agnostics and the atheists had to say about this day. They're getting drunk. They're smoking their dope. They're having their orgies and their parties. They're making light of it. He has given the enemies of God an occasion to blaspheme. To them, it is just another big joke for they believe the Bible is a joke anyway. And this is just one more joker in a long line of jokers. And we're a bunch of imbeciles and fools to sit around and listen to what the Bible says because it's always going to be wrong. Proof positive. This man said the Lord would come back May the 21st, 2011. Somebody said, Preacher, you're being awful hard on him. No, I'm not. He's gonna, it's going to be a lot harder for him when he faces the Lord Jesus Christ. For he has done a lot of damage to the cause of Christ. You need to hear what I've got to say. Don't pass this off this morning as just another message. This is laid upon my soul like nothing has ever been laid upon my soul. Let me tell you what should happen. First of all, he needs to come forth and play the man. He needs to quit hiding. He needs to come out into the public. And he needs to take his position before the cameras and before the people who are begging right now to interview him. They want to hear what he has to say. First of all, he needs to come out. Then he needs to confess that what he did flew in the face of the plain scriptural warning to not set a day of the second coming. He needs to look right into that camera eyeball to eyeball and be a man and say, I made a fool out of myself. I thought by my arrogant pride, my arrogant pride that I could pick a date for the Lord Jesus Christ to come back and be right. And he was dead wrong, friend. He was dead wrong. And the church needs to rebuke him for what he did. He did not rise up with the approval of the church. He was not sent forth by the Holy Spirit or the Lord God. He becomes another false prophet in a long line of false prophets. Saved, he may be saved. But my friend, he was still used as a false prophet. He gave the enemies of God an occasion to blaspheme. There are those out there right now, if you try to witness to them about the Lord Jesus Christ, they will throw him in your face. It'll be hard to get over him. the damage that was done by this. He needs to confess that he sinned. He needs to look into that camera and say, what I did was wrong. I sinned against God. I sinned against the church. I sinned against the truth. What I did was wrong. My arrogant rebellion led me to do what I did. Thirdly, he needs to confess that his own arrogance and pride lay at the heart of his folly. It's arrogance and it's pride for a man to come along and think of all the people for 2,000 years that have lived in the church of God that he alone is the one picked by the Almighty to lay down the date for the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. My friend, he was not. But he was arrogant to think he was. My friend, the church is full of arrogant preachers. Make no mistake about that. We have no shortage on arrogance when it comes to the church today. Thirdly, he needs to openly, publicly repent and ask for forgiveness before the cameras and mean it and get right with God before the people that he has deceived and made a mockery of and made a sham out of and my friend, the people that have sold everything they got they're broke today and there's no second advent. What do you think you'd feel like this morning if you had sold your house, sold your car, sold everything you had, spent every dime of that money for something that was a lie? These people have to live with that today. And some of these people are your real brothers and sisters in the Lord Jesus Christ. Maybe a message like this might help the next one who decides that he or she has figured out the date of the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. I could preach you a message off a list this long 
of all the people in 2,000 years that have picked the date of the second coming of the Lord. Some of them so arrogant to do it four and five times and still have people that follow them. If I were an atheist or an agnostic, I'd point to that and say, See how stupid these sheep are to be deceived not only one time, but two times and three times and four times and five times by the same crowd. You tell me there is something to your faith. Do you believe that there's any truth in Christianity when we've got this kind of a charlatan, this kind of a sideshow, this kind of a put on that comes and stands up before people, has their hopes built up, and then slams them on the rocks and he doesn't come back. Now we have to make excuses for him. I make none. All I do is preach the word of God to you and tell you he was wrong from day one. For the Bible is as plain as it can possibly be. No man knoweth the hour or the day. And I'll tell you why I believe that in just a moment. My friend, the scripture should be preached as it always has been. The scripture is right about man. The word of God did not miss the issue when it came to man. The Bible knows us from head to toe. The Bible says that from the top of our heads to the bottom of our feet, there is no soundness in us. That we are rotten to the core. We are fallen creatures. We can't pull ourselves up by our own bootstrap. We are lost without God. We are, we are, we are. The Bible said the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked who can know it and friend if you let yourself be if you if you trust the world if you trust the world they will make merchandise of you they will run over you they will strip you of everything you've got and when there's nothing left of you of any value they'll throw you down on the side of the road and then they'll trample you and jump up and down and shout about what they've done to you the world is no friend of mankind the only friend we have is the Lord Jesus Christ he knows man the Bible said he knew man and he knew what was in man and he did not commit himself unto man do you know why he knows what motivates us he knows what knows what makes us tick he knows what we're made out of and the fundamental change must take place we must be born again the scriptures write about sin sin will not stop Sin will not stop until it is finished. When sin starts, it has an agenda. Sin has, a, sin has an agenda, and that agenda is, when it is finished, it bringeth forth death. The Bible said sin is a mockery. The Bible said sin is deceptive. The Bible said sin is a curse. The Bible said sin is power. The Bible said sin leads to death. And the only thing that can break the power of sin is the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Revelation 1.5 He hath washed us from our sins in His own blood. The Bible is right about sin. Man's problem is not education. Man's problem is not location. Man's problem is not his school. It's not his culture. It's not his race. It's not his country. Man's problem is sin. S-I-N. And the only remedy for sin is a man. The Lord Jesus Christ and the blood of that man. The, the, the Lord Jesus Christ. That's the only remedy for sin. They may not accept that message. They may reject that message. But that is the truth. Then the third thing is that the Bible is right about salvation. There is salvation in none other. For there is no other name under heaven given among men. Whereby we must be saved. Once you are saved. He'll save you out of your Baptist religion. He'll save you from your Episcopalian religion. He'll save you from your Roman Catholic religion. He'll save you from your Methodist religion. He'll save you. And once he saves you, you become a child of God. There was a female reporter down there in Egypt. That female reporter was covering these uh, Arab revolts against, uh, against their dictator. My friend, let me tell you what happened to her. She got knocked down in the square. A man grabbed hold of her and began to molest her. He started to rape her. And she, and one after another, began to rape this woman. And she began to scream out. She thought because she screamed that they would stop what they were doing. It only inflamed their lust. They continued like animals 
to pounce upon this woman in that square. These are those dear souls in Egypt that want freedom and equality. You kidding? You know what I'm talking about today? They need to be born again. If a man rapes a woman, if a man pulls an atrocity like that upon somebody, that man has never met the Lord. He needs to be born again. The issue is not whether you're an Egyptian or Libyan or Tunisian or an African or European or an American. The issue is have you been born again? That message does not change. And then the Bible is right about the second coming. Here's what the scripture says. Let me be careful with this. Listen carefully. The second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ is a multifaceted thing. First of all, there is the coming for the bride of Christ, which was a mystery not even known to the Old Testament saint. How in the world could a man arrive at a date for the rapture when there is nothing in the Old Testament about the rapture? When the rapture was a mystery known only to the Apostle Paul and revealed at the end of the at the beginning of the church age in the in the late at 60s in from 60 to 90 AD. How can you arrive at a date about something that was an absolute and complete mystery that they knew nothing about? It was revealed to the Apostle Paul. The second coming of Christ comes in three installments. First, he comes for his church which catches the bride up to meet him. Amen. Secondly, he comes in the middle of the tribulation period. And there is another catching up of the tribulation saints along with the Jews. Third appearing is at the end of the tribulation period. When he comes at what we call the revelation. Amen. When he comes to reveal himself. And he comes as King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Think, think, think. He said except those days should be shortened. No flesh should be left alive. If therefore the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ is connected to the end of a tribulation period which is subject to being changed, which can be shortened, and nobody knows what point it's shortened from, then my friend, how in the world can you arrive at a date of a thing that is in, is in flux that you don't even know when? Nobody knows but the Father do you see how foolish a thing that for somebody to do all this calculating, some people like numbers, believe me. Some folks like to calculate. Oh, I've been charts down through the years. People have sent me charts. So if I sat down and I looked at all these charts, that's one thing God did not give me and that was numbers. I would never be a CPA. I'd never make it. I couldn't handle it. I couldn't hack it. I'd go screaming mad into the woods. I can't handle numbers. Just a few. Just enough to get by. Math is not my strong point. That's why I don't have to worry about charts. And figuring from this date to that date. And this date to that date. And this date to that date. And this is exactly what he did. He had all of his charts laid out. And all of his dates laid out. But he failed one big thing. Two big things. Number one. He failed to believe God's word when it says no man can know that date. But secondly, he failed to understand that the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ at the end of the tribulation period is based entirely upon the shortening of the days. Except those days should be shortened. Therefore, if you had a fixed calendar of the second coming, but yet the days are going to be shortened. You don't know how far, how many, how long. Amen. How in the world can you pick a date for the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ? People are so messed up today that they've got the rapture taking place at the end of the tribulation period. Amen. They're so messed up today that they believe we're going through the tribulation right now. They're so messed up today that they believe that for the last 7, 8, 9, 10, whatever, that the church has been in the tribulation. Let me tell you something. When the Lord said, except those days be short and no flesh be left alive. He's talking about a time like there never has been upon the face of this earth. He's talking about a time where human flesh 
will seek to die. The Bible said they'll cry out for death and death will flee from them. The great tribulation as it's recorded in the book of Revelation, this earth has never seen. I grant it to you that the year 2011 has introduced some issues to America and to the world that are, that are really unprecedented. The great mighty Mississippi River places over 50 feet above its normal stage. It's flooding towns and it's flooding people. It's driving them from their homes. Granted. And granted that East Tennessee and granted that Georgia and Mississippi and North Carolina have seen more earth, have seen more tornadoes than I ever imagined in my lifetime that I would ever see. They're coming at an unprecedented rate. Granted that hurricanes are hitting our coastline that are literally changing the face of America. Amen. Granted, tsunamis are being produced by earthquakes. Profound tsunamis that wipes out a huge portion of Japan. And we are yet to know the full effects of Fuku, Fu, Fu, Fukuyama, whatever that is up there. That, that, uh, that, <laughs> what's, that, what's it called? Fukuyama. Whatever it is, yeah. <laughs> Amen. We don't know how bad it's going to be. We don't know. What next? He said that a great earthquake was going to hit in New Zealand. It didn't hit. He said the time would be 6 o'clock Eastern Standard Time here in the States yesterday. And believe it or not, I sat there and watched the tick, watched the clock tick, 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 tick. Because I had the second advent on my mind. I do every day of my life. Every day that I live, I think about the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. You say, preacher, were you disappointed because the Lord didn't come? I'll be disappointed if it doesn't come today. I'll be disappointed if it doesn't come tomorrow. I don't try to find him wrong. I wasn't hoping that he was wrong. But I know this. I know no man knows the hour or the day. Except the Father only. Nobody but the Father. God the Father says to the Son, It's time, Son. And go back. And that's when he's coming. So what is that, preacher? I believe it's soon. Now I know that sounds hollow, doesn't it? Really, think about it. After yesterday, for me to say, I believe the Lord's coming soon, sounds hollow. Let me give you another warning. December the 21st, 2012, is the end of the Mayan calendar. There's been an awful lot, an awful lot of uh, exposure to that. An awful lot of people now preparing for doomsday. Here we go again. To, uh, uh, December the 21st, 2012. Let me tell you something, folks. Why in the world would the Lord reveal the coming of the Lord or the end of the world to a bunch of Mayan Indians down here in South America when he says plainly in his word that no man knows the hour, no man knows the day. Now 2012, December the 21st, something may happen. Well, yeah, there's something, may have something profound may happen. But it has nothing to do with the coming of the Lord. The Lord Jesus is going to come when the Father says, Go, son, and go get my children. And he's coming again. Make no mistake about it. I would say again to this man, if I had him standing before me, if I met him personally, and I've never met him, but I'd say to him, Sir, you have created a firestorm. You have hurt a lot of people. You did not have to do what you did. You drew so much attention to yourself. Now it's time for you to stand up, be a man, and take the responsibility for what you've done. Don't hide. Don't run. Don't run. It's time for him to stand up and account for what he's done. Accountability is a big deal. And he needs to give an account. That said, we may leave here before the sun goes down. That hasn't affected my belief in the second coming one bit. Not one bit. The Lord Jesus is coming again. Are you ready? Father, in Jesus' name, I pray that you'd use what I've said, Lord. I spoke from my heart and I spoke the truth and confirmed by the Holy Ghost. God, I pray this man be restored. I pray, Heavenly Father, be right. I pray his sins be forgiven. I pray, Lord, before he leaves this world that all things will be right between him and thee. And I pray, Heavenly Father, he makes it right with those that he's deceived and those he's hurt. God, we pray in Jesus' sweet name we ask it. And amen. Let's stand up and sing, brother. Page 383 in the all American
come sing another verse. He just got saved, folks. anointed with oil in the name of the Lord. <laughs> 